Welcome to our first masterclass. Low and slow barbecuing, Australian beef and lamb with Weber Australia. Well guys, Rare Medium Academy has been a lot of hard work and we're finally so pleased and excited to bring it to you here today, live from MLA, North Sydney. Whether it's butchery information, a simple sandwich, takeaway, delivery, to fine dining, our team are here to create, educate and inspire commercial food service sector to have success with Australian red meat on menu. So who is this for? Chefs, food service, procurement managers, wholesalers, educators, consumers, the Australian red meat industry as a whole. first started cooking beef way back in 1990, 30 years ago at McDonald's. And then I knew I was set for a career in culinary. I progressed to a retail butchery role for seven years whilst I was at school and throughout my apprenticeship. I've been a chef for 26 years, 10 of them leading the charge as a food development manager one of the biggest commercial catering companies in Australia. In 2014, I landed my dream role as corporate chef for Meat and Livestock Australia. And it gave me the opportunity to hone my craft, not only here in Australia, but throughout, but throughout the UK, Europe, and Asia. Throughout that time, I, we, have been lucky to collaborate with some of the biggest food service end users in Australia to help them with their challenges of Australian red meat on menu. About Rare Medium Academy. So the program involves three, three different elements. The first one is a free monthly webinar, which you're tuning in today, that'll help you with red meat across food service. No matter what, what part of food service you're in, we'll have something to help you. Our producer to plate series, educational stories where we take food service leaders back to the farm to learn what goes into producing the greatest meat on earth. And then they're inspired to create a dish right there on site that will inspire others. And that relates, into, relates to their business. Pro tips, that's something I'm really excited about. Welcome to our kitchen. We'll have a series of 30 videos that will guide you to, champion Australian, to championing Australian red meat on menu. Now, about today's uh, webinar, please type your questions in the YouTube broadcast feed box. We may not be able to address all, to them, all of them, but rest assured, we will respond to the feed in due course straight after the masterclass. If there are any difficulties throughout the sessions or we have any cutouts, please stand by and we will re reconnect as soon as possible. So guys, remember today, education is the key to success. So our first webinar, we've been lucky to team up with the Kings of Barbecue, Weber Australia. And this little unit next to me is the Weber Smokefire Barbecue. We're going to be giving this away to one lucky participant that's viewing the webinar here today. Stick around right till the end of the webinar and we'll show you how to do that. This is what we used in our masterclass here today. So the first dish that we're going to roll off with is Australian beef point end brisket. Now we've got our our corporate butcher, Dougie, he's going to walk you through a butchery element and then I'll have a culinary session after it. And we've learnt the recipe from a good friend of mine, Grant Coleman, who took, who's, part, who's a pit master and took this recipe to Texas to take on the best of them. And he shared it with us to give to you to have success in your outlets. So without further ado, let's go. G'day, I'm Doug from Meat and Livestock Australia. Welcome to the Rare Medium Academy Masterclasses, 
Today, we're gonna to talk to you about selecting, preparing, and cooking Australian beef and lamb for your barbecue. Now, we all know storing our vacuum packaged meat fat side up is the best way. All the meat juices go down to the bottom of the bag, so when we open it up, we open it up fat side up, all the meat juices down the bottom, and there's less mess. Now we're gonna show you how to open the meat properly. First of all, make sure the fat is on the top. We don't want all that meat juice flowing all over the place, so we wanna have all the meat juice underneath. You get your knife, we're just gonna slice gently through the bag, open it up nicely and take the meat out, leaving all that meat juice in the bag to be discarded. Okay, now that we've removed the meat from the bag, without leaving too much of that meat juice on. The reason why we'd like to remove all that meat juice is so the meat doesn't slide around all over the board while we're trying to work on it. What I'm looking for is those big thick deposits of fat. So we just roll her over on that side. I'm gonna start removing some of that fat there down that point end of the brisket and that end of it as well. Then we're gonna roll her back over and start removing a lot of that fat on this side as well. So now our brisket's all ready to go over to Chef Sam, who's gonna show you how to cook a low and slow brisket. Thanks, Dougie. We've got this brisket ready to go. He's trimmed it nicely for us, and while he's trimmed it, he's allowed it to come to room temperature, which is gonna be fantastic when it hits the barbecue. We've got a good blend here. 60% cracked pepper, 40% kosher salt. We're gonna make sure we rub that all in the crevices on the above and underside of the point end brisket. Then we're gonna allow 15 to half an hour for those flavors to really penetrate and absorb all the moisture out of our brisket. Next step, we're gonna cook on our smoker at 135 degrees until we get an internal temp of around 65 degrees. In that process, every half an hour, we're gonna give it a good spritz. What's a spritz? It's a liquid that absorbs into the brisket and stops it from drying out. We've got one third apple cider vinegar, one third beef stock, one third water. We're gonna give it a good spray every half an hour and then we're gonna put the hood down. What the hood will do is allow that smoke to penetrate and give that wonderful smoke ring we're after for our brisket. We've reached 65 degrees Celsius. Now it's time for the crutch hold. We're gonna remove our brisket, place it back in front of us. We're gonna wrap it with aluminium foil. We wanna get a nice tight wrap all around our brisket. Then I'm gonna peak the top and we're gonna lightly pour in about 300 mils of beef stock. Then we're gonna wrap it back up, put it into our Weber, and we're gonna smoke it to an internal degrees of 95. Once we reach 95, we're gonna remove the brisket from the barbecue and then rest it for about five minutes with the aluminium foil up just to release the steam. We're gonna wrap it then in tea towels, put it into our esky, and rest it for two hours prior to carving. The great thing about these pellet grills with Weber here today is that we can control the temperature. We can get the exact degree of doneness that we want that takes the stress out. Look, it's all good to have your charcoal or your traditional wood-fired smoke ovens, but when you're in food service, you really want that kind of set and forget. Put it in, lock in your temperature, get the smoke you want, get the desired result you want. That's what's good about these smoke pellet barbecues. Okay, we've got the best beef you could possibly get out of this Weber smoke fire unit. Now let's see how it fits in a food service menu. Well, we've done it here today with some Boston beans, some slaw, some pickles. You can also do it in a wonderful sandwich or a power bowl offering. It's so versatile, it'll meet your cost of goods and you'll have happy customers and that's what it's all about with Australian beef. To serve, Burnt ends, what are burnt ends? Well, we've taken the point end off the brisket. We've cubed it and then we've put it onto a tray. We've made a homemade barbecue sauce, drizzled it over the top, put it into the barbecue, hood down 140 degrees for half an hour. It reduced, caramelized, and gave us the perfect accompaniment to our brisket, condiments, and salad. Look at that brisket, the smoke ring, the tenderness, the end result was well worth the nine hour cook. That is the holy mecca of low and slow American barbecue. And we've shown you how to do that here today at Rare Medium Academy. How lucky are we to have a product like that from our Australian producers? I tell you what, there's nothing that beats 
a good Australian beef brisket when it's cooked right. And we've got the recipe and we'll show you how to get to that link at the end of the session. But we're going to share that recipe with you just to help you out as well. So a few questions came through on the live feed and prior. So one of them was, why does beef brisket temperature plateau for a long time cooking uh, in a low and slow cook? And how do we manage this? So I guess what it's called is evaporative cooling. So I, I guess, you know, when you go for a run and you get a hot sweat on the top of your forehead, this is what's happening to the, to the brisket and when it plateaus and goes into the store. So the way to uh, rise the temperature is called the Texas Crutch Hold, which is what I showed you in the video, how we wrap it up with foil and then that escalates the temperature to go above the store and cook. So we hope that helps out that question that was answered today. Now another question was talking about was how do we cook uh, low and slow cooking for uh, an endless supply for a commercial food service outlet during a service. So, so I don't know about an endless supply, but what, what I do know is that the smoke ring hits the brisket or whatever you're trying to smoke in the first two hours. So what you can do is start your protein off in the smoke fire in this example, and then finish it in a combi oven or a hot ca cabinet like an auto sham or, 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 or something of that type. And then you can keep on replenishing your smoker and then having enough backup and mise en place for your service period. So we, we hope that answers the question as well. And the last one was, is what's the spritz all about? Well, the spritz helps add flavour and moisture to the cooking process. So we, we hope that helps you out with the beef brisket. Now for our next, if you've got some more questions, we'll, we'll reflect to them at the end of the webinar. So for our next video, we, we're going to beef short ribs. Short ribs are taken off the forequarter of the animal and uh, with, with the brisket removed. So they're at the top of the animal, just underneath the, uh, the, the, steak, the steak bit as you go down the, the side of the carcass, whether it be the, the, the uh, tomahawk which, which, or, the, or, the, or the cube roll or scotch fillet. So they're the ribs that sit underneath, or the chuck ribs as well. So we're gonna show you how to uh, have success with beef short ribs in the smoker. So without further ado, let's cross to Doug again. He'll talk to you about butchering and preparing these for the smoker, and then I will follow on with a culinary demonstration. Let's go. G'day, I'm Doug from Meat and Livestock Australia. Welcome to the Rare Medium Academy Masterclasses. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about selecting, preparing, and cooking Australian beef and lamb for your barbecue. Okay, today's cut we're looking at is a beef short ribs. This comes from the forequarter of the animal. There's only a little bit of work to do on this cut today. We need to just take off a little bit of that fat across the top, turn him over, and we're gonna remove that bit of membrane from underneath there that covers the rib bones. That part there actually curls up, makes the beef curl up when we're cooking it. Then it's all ready to go into the cooker. Okay, we've trimmed off that little bit of fat off the top. We've got rid of that membrane underneath it. This cut is one of my favorite cuts cooked low and slow. So Chef Sam is gonna show you now how he's gonna create that perfect beef dish. Beef short rib, as Doug said, what a piece of meat. Let's get it on the barbecue. First step, kosher salt, cracked black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika and cayenne pepper. We're gonna mix it all liberally together. Then we're gonna get in all those crevices of the meat. Let's get our beef short ribs into the Weber smoke fire. We want to get the, the smoke fire at about 130 degrees Celsius. Then we're going to stick a probe right in the center of the meat and we're going to take that meat to 65 degrees Celsius. Don't forget to spritz it every half an hour with your apple cider vinegar, beef stock and water spritz mixture. Next step, we're going to pull it out when it reaches 65 and we're going to wrap it tightly with foil and put it back in the smoke fire until we get and internal degrees of about 95. We've taken the beef short rib out of the Weber smoke fire. We've allowed it to rest for a good 20 to 30 minutes. Whilst we've been doing that, Julie's made a vibrant summer salad that'll accompany the dish. She's then cut the cut right down the intercostal to accompany the salad and then served perfectly for your pub, club, hotel or restaurant this summer. What a versatile cut. You can cut it straight down the intercostal and use it as part of a serving platter for an American barbecue plate. Or you can take it off the bone and shred it for a taco. As a salad topper, 
It's got versatility like no other cut, and it's slow, low, gelatinous taste, really is a win with the customers. Thanks guys, we hope you enjoyed that short rib recipe. So a question came through live in relation to the brisket, so I'll just refer to that quickly. Peach paper or aluminium foil? They both work well. I've found if you put peach paper directly over an open flame, it'll catch fire. So uh, foil's probably the safer option. If you've got an offset smoker, peach paper's good as well. But they all work well as long as you've got a tight wrap on your meat whilst cooking. Another question came in about uh, would chuck ribs work for the short ribs? Yes, of course they would. Same sort of braising. Uh, it's, it's really time versus temperature when, when slow cooking. Now, one other question that came through uh, earlier before our broadcast here today is what's the difference between asado ribs and normal short ribs? So short ribs is when we cut straight down the intercostal and they're the short ribs I just demonstrated to you then. Asado ribs is where we cut across the rib set and you can go as thin or as thick as you like. So they're mostly popular and found in, in uh, Korean barbecue, with uh, barbecue kalbi ribs. So we hope that helps to you. Asada ribs across the rib set, beef short ribs down the rib set. One more question is, uh, I prefer to cook it on the bone as it adds flavor. Um, um, yes, good question indeed. You know, uh, the cooking short rib on the bone does add a lot of flavor flavour and it also increases the yield whilst cooking um, and, and that's what I'd recommend as well with short rib. So one more question is, uh, no, so that, that's our last question on the short ribs. Once again, it's time versus temperature. Make sure you get a good MSA product and you can't go wrong. So on with our next uh, demonstration and we're going to go to lamb now. So nothing brings people together like we say at Meat and Livestock Australia than Australian lamb. It's the dish that we share across cultures and across friends and family. And why not bring this to your food service establishment this summer? So what we're looking at is the perfect way to slow and low cook a lamb shoulder. Let's go to our butcher, our butcher Doug, and he's gonna uh, show you the butchery element. Then we're gonna cross to, cross to the culinary element with myself and take some questions. G'day, I'm Doug from Meat and Livestock Australia. Welcome to the Rare Medium Academy Masterclasses. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about selecting, preparing, and cooking Australian beef and lamb for your barbecue. Today's cut we're looking at is a shoulder of lamb. This one is what we call the banjo shoulder. Not a great deal of work to do to this one. All I really need to do is get my knife. I'm just gonna remove that little bit of silver skin there. Just stops that bit of meat from curling up. Not a lot of it there to take off. Nice and simple, ready to roll. There's our shoulder, ready for Chef Sam to cook up for a great barbecue feast. The banjo lamb shoulder, what a cracking cut for our low and slow cooking in the Weber smoke fire. Let's show you how to do it. We're gonna start off with a bit of a Middle Eastern inspired rum. I've got baharat, lemon, rosemary, cracked black pepper, kosher salt, olive oil. Let's make sure we get that rub all into the crevices of our shank and our shoulder. Once we've done that, let's leave it for about 15 minutes for those flavors to really immersify into our lamb shoulder. Let's get the Weber smoke fire on at 130 degrees Celsius, a common theme. Lamb shoulder goes in. We're gonna probe it to about 65, but prior to doing that, let's make sure that we spritz it every half an hour. I've made it Easy spritz for you guys. That's kind of got that Middle Eastern theme. Pomegranate molasses, apple cider vinegar, and water. Once we get 65, we're gonna put it in the Texas crutch holds. What's that? We'll remove the lamb shoulder and we'll wrap it tightly in aluminum foil and put it back in the smoke fire. That imparts lovely moisture in the cooking process. We're then gonna probe it until we get our degree of doneness of 95 degrees Celsius. That's the time to pull it out, rest it, and then pull it for your salad, your sandwich, or your share plate. 130 degrees, remember, is our target temperature for cooking in the Weber smoke fire. So there you go, chef. Lamb shoulder, low and slow cooked in the Weber smoke fire. Traditionally, we use that cut as chops. These days, we've got a beautiful sharing dish for your customers that'll keep them coming back 
time and time again. Share the lamb. So just on the barbecue, this barbecue here, we've had some questions of what's my opinion on it. I actually loved using it and I'll tell you why, because it held a uh, consistent temperature. Now that's so important when you're cooking and especially when you're mise en plusing in a busy commercial kitchen and you've got several tasks to do. If you've just set this to your, to your degree doneness, you can set and forget and then get on, crack on with other mise en plus. So I think it's a vital part of the kitchen and it also provides that kind of theatre. And we all know that Weber is, is, is renowned for quality products. So, you know, it made it really easy for us when they reached out to us to team with them. And, you know, the added option of giving away a $2,500 barbecue to one of our lucky participants just was something that, you know, that, that, that brought a big smile to my face. So in relation to the lamb shoulder, um, what, what, what questions that we have here? So one of the questions that came to us was, uh, we've seen a lot of lamb shoulder hitting menu, more so than leg, which traditionally has been a roasting cut that's been not only for the consumer, but for food service for many years. So why, why are people reverting to the shoulder? I guess it's a a combination of the fat and the collagen in this one, it brings a nice rich flavour when it breaks down. And the slow lamb shoulder is actually something you can set and forget. And then you pull out the scapula bone and you have this lovely gelatinous meat that, uh, that, that really brings theatre to your menu. So there's nothing better than when you're a chef and you're pulling out those bones and you get that beautiful meat there and the customer's just got that extra wow factor. So think about it, you know, past COVID, right? Your, your waiter could take this to a table, a smaller person, and pu pull the bones out in front of the customer and then have that kind of theatre that just takes it to the next level. And, and, and not only that, we, we, we look at other parts of commercial uh, food service, right? If you can set and forget a low and slow uh, piece of meat, whether it be a barbecue or a combi oven overnight, suddenly you've got more time in your day to concentrate and get more things right. Whether it be HACCP, whether it be checking out your fridges, whether it be planning the menus, whether it be talking to your wait staff, it gives you time back in the day. And we like to call that an efficiency dividend. So just don't think of cost of goods all the time. Think of ways that it will ease the dynamic on your staff to take it to the next level. And that's what this, these products do. And that's what we're about here, showing you secondary cuts that win on your menu that can bring customers time and time again to share the lamb and great Australian beef and take it to the next level. I get a bit excited there, probably a bit too loud in my microphone. Now, onto our final dish. Now, when I first used to work in a retail butchery, lamb ribs is something that we served in, in the dog, uh, to, the, to the dog bones, right? But these days, poor old Rover doesn't get them anymore. Uh, they're so popular on menu. So here's a quick way we're gonna show you how to cook low and slow lamb ribs to give the, uh, an awesome appetizer or canapé for your food service business. G'day, I'm Doug from Meat and Livestock Australia. Welcome to the Rare Medium Academy Masterclasses. Today, we're gonna talk to you about selecting, preparing and cooking Australian beef and lamb for your barbecue. Today's cut we're looking at is the Australian lamb ribs. These ones are from the breast of the animal, so they come off that section of the lamb. All we're gonna to do to that today is remove a little bit more of that fat off the top. We're gonna to move that bit of membrane off the bottom and it's all ready to go over for cooking. Now these little beauties are all ready to go, all trimmed nicely. Over to you, Chef Sam, to cook on that barbecue. Well, thanks, Doug. He's trimmed them up beautifully, ready for the Weber smoke fire. What we've got here today is cumin, coriander, cinnamon, salt, and cracked black pepper. We're gonna liberally put them through the lamb ribs into the Weber smoke fire, low and slow, 130 degrees for two to three hours. The great thing at the end of this, you can eat them straight away, or you can baste them with a sauce and then re-put them on the grill to get that nice caramelized burnt end finish. Lamb ribs are a versatile dish, good for your menu. You can use them as a bar snack, an entree, or a substantial canapé. Whilst our lamb ribs have been resting, we've made good use of that time and Julie came on and made a beautiful zesty fatouche salad. This had cucumbers, tomato, lettuce, lemon, and really added some vibrancy to this wonderful lamb dish. We've got our lamb ribs, we've cut them down the intercostal, and then we've plated them up. 
We've garnished them with a tahini and pomegranate molasses yogurt and then finally finished them off with some chopped parsley and some sumac. The wonderful thing about low and slow with Australian lamb ribs is that it breaks down the fat and it really renders and adds to the flavour. And with our spritz, it gave it a nice citric tone to cut through the fat of the lamb. This is my call to action for you to use this cut on your menu. It's easy to prepare, versatile on menu, and is very tasty. Share the lamb. Okay, how good were lamb ribs? The, things I like, uh, the thing I like about lamb ribs is they're so versatile. They can go as a power bowl topper, they can go as a canapé, they can go as a snack. And we just hope we gave you a bit of inspiration so you can have a try of them. Just remember, right, it's, you don't have to, to always think about what our marinade is. Think about the cooking process and then put your own spices in it to make it your own. Now, all these recipes, guys, if you head, if, if you head to raremediumacademy.com, and then go to recipes, we've got them published, ready for you here right now. And then you can also print off the PDF so you can implement them straight into the kitchen and onto your menu. So we'll keep on adding to that every time we do, to, we do a webinar. So at the end of it, you can rest assured that you just don't have to watch the video, you can take the recipe away and implement it straight into your business. Now, one of the questions that came in is, is what's the difference between a lamb rack and lamb ribs? So lamb rack, once again, is, is from the saddle uh, with, with the rib bone coming to the end of the cutlet. And then underneath that, you'll have your lamb ribs, which come off the belly of, of the lamb and are nice and succulent and full of flavour. Now, how do we win the Weber Smokefire Barbecue? First thing. You need to follow Rare Medium Academy on Instagram. Then on your own page, on your Instagram page, you need to put a photo of your best low and slow beef, lamb, veal or goat recipe, right? And you must tag at Weber Oss New Zealand Barbecues and at Rare Medium Academy. And we'll go through and we'll pick the best recipe and photo tagged on your line, following Rare Medium Academy Instagram, and then award the winner at our next live webinar, which will be at early December. If you've got, if you want any more clarification, head to raremediumacademy.com, hit masterclass tab, and it'll take you to the terms and conditions of the competition. Now, without further ado, that brings us to the end of our masterclass. We've really enjoyed you joining in today and we hope you've taken something away. We're gonna be bringing plenty more of these on a monthly capacity. We've got some um, uh, questions that have come through. Uh, do you marinate the smoke flavoring in foil? Do you marinate the smoke flavoring wrapping the lamb in foil. So do you lose, do you lose, that question I'll just have to go, do you lose the smoke flaving wrapping the lamb in foil? Um, no, because the smoke enters the cook method after the first uh, one to two hours and then it wraps off and finishes the cooking process. So I hope that answers your question. Look, if you've got any other questions, I'll look at the feed on the YouTube broadcast and answer to them after the webinar. That, and one more that's just coming live. What is Baharat spice? So that's seven spice. That's the Arabic spice that really takes your lamb to the next level. So that's all the time I've got to answer questions here today. They're coming in live. Look, thank you very much for joining in. We hope you enjoyed our first webinar session. Log on to raremedium.com for all those recipes. Follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And we'll see you early December for our next masterclass. Just before we part, a big thank you to our partners at Weber Australia and also TNM Creative, Julie Ballard, Doug Piper and Troy Cow, who is our Mise and Plus chef, all integral to the success of today's production. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time on Rare Medium Academy.